yeah, what, what's kind of like one of the more interesting projects out there to you that's either being built or, or not built yet? I think, hmm, good question. It doesn't have to be like, oh, okay, this is Richard uh, Hart Max's stamp of approval and, you know, yeah. uh, we're going to hold them to it or anything. Nothing, nothing like that. Just, you know, just one, one example of something that you're, you're looking at maybe even in passing. I mean, I would say that the, the coin that I think the least people know about or interested in, honestly, is Tetra uh, of the ones that I, there, there's really only a handful, as you saw in the post, there's only a handful of, I mean, I guess there's more than a handful, maybe two handfuls, whatever, uh, yeah. of coins that I really pay attention to in the ecosystem. And uh, I did a whole post on the game theory of, of Tetra and stuff too. And that's when I had to kind of come around. I'm like, okay, DeFi automation, why does this make sense? Oh, you stake it, you, you know, you earn fees, all this stuff. Okay. But what is the model? Like, is it revenue sharing? You know, what, what's this thing about? So I think, and funny enough, Somi recently did a video. He's been doing a lottery ticket series and uh, he put it in a lottery, lottery ticket category, which to me is like, you know, I've been following it for a few months now and, and I know the team really well. They've been on the show a million times. And um, to me, it's just, it's, it's one of those, there's certain pieces that are not there. It's not, I think with, with projects like that, with Tetra, for example, they're almost, they're kind of hard to approach from the average crypto person, even an Eric system where there's a lot of people, uh, a lot of smart people, because they're not, again, they're not a meme coin. They're not this simple, tangible, you, you know, thing uh, for you to understand. They're this, okay, there's this ecosystem where you can, they're going to be these, uh, um, there's going to be these strategies you can deploy and it's super DeFi related. You know, you can like automate your hex staking and automatically sell the yield and turn into something. It's all these moving pieces to it too. So funny enough, like those coins and the, and the Somi talked about in the video too. It's like, it's one of those things where it's hard. It's hard to get excited about because it takes, there's a learning curve. Right. But once you under, or at least for me, once I understood it, I was like, wow, this is, if they're able to pull this off, not only will it be super good for pulse chain for volume and stuff there, but it'll be extremely good for other protocols where the strategies mm -hmm. are deployed because all of a sudden, instead of you manually clicking all these buttons to do liquid loan stuff and power city stuff, or, <clears> you know, all the pH products or hex staking or, uh, your yield farming on pulse X when you're doing, uh, you know, your ink farms and, and earning ink and all that stuff, instead of you having to click 10 buttons to enter exit, take your yield, swap to a different pool, all that stuff. You're able to say, okay, here's a strategy. I want to deploy the strategy. You fund your wallet, you put all stuff in there. And then instead of you having to be around and, oh, I got to click the button at a certain time, I got to pull it mm -hmm. out of oh, the markets down, whatever. It'll automate all of these different features for you. And then it's kind of like this passive, I like to think of it as this passive income. Cause, you, cause when you stack, so the, to use the platform, I'll talk just a couple minutes of like, just the yeah, mechanics no, real quick. That's why I asked the question. I want to hear about this. Yeah. Just, just to set the plat, just to set the stage. It's like, you don't need the token to use the platform, but if you stake the token, it's like a revenue sharing model where you get, you get paid from the fees created using the platform hmm. to use the platform. I think you stay, pay in stable coins or PLS, one of those, and then you deploy strategies. And again, it handles all the moving pieces for you. So you're not clicking all the buttons and doing it at ineffective times. It's, it's just like an efficient way of either trading or uh, yield farming or whatever, whatever you can automate, which is pretty much endless as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. So not only does it save time and, and effort and um, make you more efficient in whatever strategy you're deploying with whatever capital, again, it's, it's using all these different protocols that are connected to it. So it's creating volume for them. It's creating, you know, if they have a buy and burn with bull stacks, you know, it's like all, all that stuff too. So for a, a fundamental piece for, for a platform to be a fundamental piece in volume uh, creation and earning, you know, the, the platform, the uh, token holders earning fees from the success of it, like revenue sharing model, mm -hmm. um, you know, you can even automate passive income. Oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to earn so much. I'm going to turn it stable. And then maybe they connect it with coast with, with CST model or something automatically you get paid every month. It just goes in your bank account. Your whatever yield you make for that month, like all these different possibilities. Super cool. Haven't launched yet. They've only launched the Omnis aggregator, which is pretty awesome. Actually, it has limit orders uh, that use the Pulse X pools. So Nine Inch has limit orders, but I believe they just use the Nine X pools. Mm. But Omnis uses the Pulse X pools, so you can set limit orders, ratio trade with it. Yeah, Omnis. let me. Uh, let, yeah, let me put it in chat. Okay. Omnis yeah, I haven't heard that one, one yet. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to do limit orders, it's it's like the only place that uses the pulse X pulls, I think. It's pretty cool. Okay. So I'll put it in the put in the private chat on this dot Oh, I see. Okay. 
So limit orders, they're going to do like compound limit orders, which are going to be like, it's a really cool thing to automatically buy sale at a certain price. So, so that's uh, the site can't be reached. Uh, it's not Tetra. Oh, sorry. Tetra.run. Omnis.tetra.run. Always get it mixed up. Oh, okay. All these, all these domains. It's like, man, I like yeah, the other day too. I tweeted dot win and was like, crap. I clicked on it. Didn't work. And like, oh, it's dot run. Um, yeah. Gotcha. So uh, Omnis says it. Uh, I'll just mention it to the guys here and then we'll show it a little bit later, but O-M-N-I-S. Yeah. So it's uh that, I think that's phase one. Um, and then phase two is like, you're able to deploy strategies again, fund your wallet, do whatever you want to do, you know, trading, staking, uh, yield farming, whatever in an automated way. And then, um, <clears throat> there'll also be a way to write your own strategy and deploy it. And there'll be, I think there's going to be like a community portal where people can like upvote different strategies. So, you know, you're using like a legit one that's been, you know, stamped or whatever too. Um, but that's, I say all that to say like those kind of things that take a while to understand and the, you know, you may get an epiphany when you come across them. Like, well, that is, again, if they pull it off, these teams got to, you know, I think they're putting in plenty of work for it and uh, I hope they do. But if they, if you're able to pull off protocols like that for a new L1 and just not only support the L1, but support all the other products that strategies are written for, man, like sky's the limit as far as that goes. Mm, I like that. And, and who's behind uh, Tetra? Like, who are the creators? And so, Neil for T-shares is uh, one of the uh, is on the team. Stu, uh, I think it's Stu Man five 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 five, I believe, on Twitter. If you get a uh, the Twitter is at Tetra Win, T E T R A Tetra Win. Yeah, it's not on your thing, so I can uh, here I'll because I wanted to run through their their uh, information so that people can kind of find what you're talking about too. Um, so where was it here? And uh, if we come over here uh, and where was it? Did I? Oh, no, this was your other one. So where was the tweet one that I had? I think it was here. There we go. Uh, yeah, so there so go. this one here is in terms of uh, there's at Tetra win. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. At Tetra win. And the ticker is uh, Tetra P. Tetra P on, pull, on deck screen and stuff, too. If anyone wants to look at chart or otherwise. Yeah. Uh, this one here to wrap pulse, or is there a better liquidity one? Uh, that one should have, yeah, it's got a half million almost. So that should be all right. Yeah. Hey, chart's not looking terrible. The Somi <laughs> effect, the Somi effect. <laughs> he recently uh, talked about it, and everyone's like, oh, actually, this does seem like a good idea, or they're just buying it for a lottery ticket, you know, that kind of way he put it either. Hey, but you know, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, this is, it uh, looks like the weekly chart. We'll find out next week if it starts coming back <laughs> down here or not. <laughs> yeah. But man, that, that's the one that I think gets the least amount of attention of the ones that I'm interested in. And uh, mm. like I said, I'm very, I'm very careful and very, like, I don't like to talk or promote about promote coins that, again, I don't think are helping the blue chips. I don't, I, I want them yeah. to help Hex. I want them to help Pulse Chain or Pulse X. I want them to help the, the entire ecosystem grow in TVL and volume and all this stuff. Those are the ones I'm most interested in. And those are the ones mm. I try to highlight. Um, you know, again, it's my prerogative. I'm not going to like every project people talk to me about projects sometimes. I'm like, yeah, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not like here to just like show projects. I'm here to be like, what makes this place better? Oh, I yeah. think that one does. Like, let me, let me, I got a finite amount of time and energy. I can spend it on the ones I think will really make it better. I'm not going to win them all. I'm not going to get them all either, but hopefully there'll be other people that can, that can, uh, you know, scale with that as well. Yeah. And, and like, it is what I'm similar as well. Like I'm not here to like, be like, Hey, this project is the best thing ever. We gotta, we gotta throw all our money into it or, whatever, I, I'm more of like a coin agnostic, which is, which is like, yeah, I have the coins that I prefer. I have the coins that I like. I have the coins that I, I want myself to cultivate more crypto on. Um, but I'm always open to hearing the newest thing. And, and you know, everything that I hear about, I'm always like, okay, you know, I'm not going to think about it super negatively, but I'm going to take it with a grain of salt, do my due diligence, do my research. And that's really what we talk about in the crypto mindset course is like, <clears throat> you, like you don't want to stay in you know, a, a bubble in crypto, you want to go out there and kind of see uh, what's all happening. And so in order to do so, like, yeah, 95% of cryptos will fail and, and suck and don't outpace Bitcoin or Ethereum or Pulse Chain or whatever. And um, yeah, you need to, um, you know, protect your capital in that way. But it doesn't mean you shouldn't be researching them doesn't mean you shouldn't be looking into them. Um, and yeah, sometimes understanding who the founders are is one way to really uh, start being like, okay, you know, do these people have a track record? Does their skills fit what they're trying to do? Um, you know, stuff like that. 
And uh, the more that you can do of that, the better. And so I think if anybody who is wanting to research more about the Pulse Chain ecosystem, talk about coins like this with a larger group of like-minded people. I mean, that's pretty much what we're doing here in the crypto mindset. And if um, I just wanted to kind of, do oh, you want to say something on that? Oh, I was, if, if you could go to if you go to that tweet one more time real quick. Oh, sure. Um, sure. Too many tabs. Yeah. Go on <laughs> I always forget. Oh, the uh, your your original tweet. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. if you actually if you go to my page, real quick, if you click on my name and then go to highlights, and then uh, Oops, yeah, the highlights. Awesome. Yeah, and then scroll down just a little bit. Yeah. So that that uh, that Tetra um, thread is like the, what I, I wrote it a few months ago, but it's like the pieces I put together for it. If anyone's interested or, or you or otherwise, I would say read that. If you know, if you didn't understand what I was talking about a few minutes ago, like mm -hmm. read that to kind of get a, a longer form version of like, okay, here's, here's what I think is interesting about it. And here's what, you know, why I talk about it, why I like it and stuff. Nice. Yeah. And that space repetition is massively important, right? You're like, Hey, I just introduced it, something to you guys that maybe you have, maybe you haven't heard about it. Okay, cool. Where can you do a little bit more research? Well, uh, you know, you got this information here, then you can use that as a springboard. Uh, then you can, you know, uh, like you said, come over here to uh, their um, uh, Twitter as well. Go into uh, the Tetra win, uh, dot win website here, right? See what's going on. Uh, you know, if you want to take maybe a condom wallet or something that, you know, uh, a brand new wallet or something like that, that you um, are like, okay, I don't know if I trust this platform yet, but I'm going to, you know, maybe, uh, you know, interact with it and see what it's all about. You know, you can jump in there and look at that. And then uh, this was the Omnis uh, one you were talking about. Um, yeah, well. yeah. If you, if you click Omnis, it's pretty cool. Actually, just look at the limit. Like the limit orders, if nothing else, like that's that's like so needed on Pulse Chain and everyone's asked for them forever. And oh, when's Pulse X going to get them? Well, you have them. I mean, you have them now. Like like uh, you have limit I, orders for the Pulse life. X Pulse. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, keep, so, keep going. Uh, I was just gonna say so in this, like I've did videos and you can search RH Max uh, uh limit orders or ominous or tetra and all that stuff too. But essentially it's like okay, if you think pulse or pulse X is gonna go down and you have die or you have some stable coin or whatever, uh you can just literally say to them, Hey, I think it's gonna go this price. I want a 10% discount. You drag the little green thing across, it'll you know set a limit order for you and it'll fill the order uh if it goes down. Also ratios, if you're like, oh I know. This particular coin this particular ratio if it goes out of that range uh you can your ratio trade get more of the coin when it goes out of the range so it's you know some of these are for more advanced users but it is a sorely needed feature on yeah. pulse chain instead of just having to market buy everything all the time well it's sorely needed feature on ethereum there i mean they have those on some dexes on ethereum but um sometimes they work sometimes they don't um so yeah i think it's something in crypto that this is just kind of the, the beginning of uh, DeFi uh, and Dex is becoming, uh, I think, more more like centralized exchanges in the in, in the sense of the tools that you can use um, will be a lot more detailed than than what they used to be. So I, I also agree with that's needed uh, with Tetra. Like when you put in uh, different or with Omnis here, when you put in different um, limit orders, um, have you had a situation where you had a limit order and the price looked like it came there on the chart but didn't quite fill or, or anything like that? I haven't had any issues getting them filled, honestly. I'm, I'm okay. thinking all the ones that I've set, most of the ones I've set have got filled. Um, okay. You know, it's it's all, they have their own algorithm and stuff that, that determines like, you know, if it needs to hit a certain, if there's other people around you, the setting around orders may affect it as well. But I think where it's funny, <clears throat> where, excuse me, where it's so early, I don't think um, it's reached the problem of too many people are setting too many things around the same range type of thing. If, if that's even a, a, a problem that may come up in the future. So yeah, because I found it very effective what I've used it so far. Okay. Yeah. I like that. And so we're talking about the evolution here, right? That's there's going to be some things that happen on pulse chain that will be um, like new tools or, or maybe sometimes the first time something's tried in crypto. Um, uh, I think, you know, Maddie um, Allen, we were on his show yesterday. We were talking about um, time pays me and stuff like this. Uh, another good concept out here that's taking some of the concepts from Hex and Pulse Chain, bringing them over uh, and adding to them uh, and, and different stuff like this. So I really uh, think, you know, the evolution is uh, going to be in terms of like the historical rhyming of it is going to be similar to what Ethereum did, what Solana did, what uh, Phantom did, what all, all these other L1s have done in the last cycle. 
but then it's not going to be exactly the same. There's going to be some stuff that's different. There's going to be some stuff that's brand new. And, and then you're going to see other crypto communities be like, oh, I, I kind of like what's happening on Pulse Chain there. Some of them will come on over and, and uh, start uh, you know, uh, working on multiple chains, but some of them might just in the background quietly start taking a few of these bits of information from, from stuff on Pulse Chain and build those tools on other parts of crypto and other L1s. And I think, you know, that is actually good for crypto because, you know, most, a lot of crypto projects, if they're open source or just the ideas in general of them, you know, are open for the taking, then it will have ripple effects onto the rest of the crypto community. In my opinion, that will be a positive thing. So it just allows more mm -hmm. people to, to get creative with crypto 